Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to Trishal Online School. After a long time, I am back again with you to present a topic. At the very beginning of my speech, I would like to give special thanks to all the learners and guardians, well wishers, and all the viewers who are watching this program live. And I would also like to give thanks to the Upojal Education Officer, Academic Supervisor, and our Head Teacher, Iqbal Barsa, for giving me the floor to present myself before you. Uh, today, I'm here with a new topic. This is right form of verbs. And before starting my topic, one thing I want to mention before you that, actually I watch all the live videos conducted by different teachers of different schools. But I see there are only few viewers. That is actually not satisfactory. As this program is going on in full swing, the main purpose is to give the maximum benefit to the students, to the learners. But actually, if the learners do not watch the program, if the, if the learners do not watch these videos, so actually there is no benefit of taking the classes and there is no benefit of arranging such a nice program for the betterment of the students. So I think I welcome all the guardians and all the viewers. Make sure you kids, your children are watching the videos for, the, for their own benefit. So make sure so that they can help themselves by learning many things uh, taught by different teachers of different institutions. So today, let's start our topic, right form of verbs. And you know, right form of verbs, it has a significant role in learning English language uh, because, you know, verb is a soul of a sentence. In a sentence, in a sentence, you can never find any sentence without verbs. So, it has much importance to learn language. Even in Bangla, what about the topic is, whatever the sentence is, whatever you are mentioning, even you can use only one word of a language. Inside that one word, there must have a verb. It might be silent or it might be visible. So, you know, five marks is allotted in your exam on this topic right from verbs. So, it has much importance, you know, and okay, let's get started with the topic, right form of verbs. And I want to make sure that uh, today we shall discuss this topic on based on four categories. And I think the topic will be very much easy for you if you follow me with in-depth concentration. So first we shall talk about simple sentence. In a simple sentence, you know, there is only one main verb and other verbs are subsidiary verbs. And how to use those subsidiary verbs in that very sentence, in a simple sentence. And the next category is tense. And tense also plays a vital role in right form of verbs. And third is voice. And if you want to get full marks, and you have to be expert in simple sentence, tense, voice, and the last one is preposition. Preposition. With these four categories, we shall talk about uh, right form of verbs. And you know, you have been learning right form of verbs, verbs since class 6 or even might be more than this class but you cannot or the students cannot uh, the students cannot make sure that they will get uh, full marks on this topic it's only because that they only learn the preliminary rules but the rules only rules will not uh, help you 
to get maximum marks on these topics. So I think today we shall uh, learn it in such a way that is actually used in exam paper. So simple sentence. I am giving you some examples to make the topic easy. One by one we shall discuss these things. Simple sentence. And you know in simple sentence three types of verbs are used like infinitive second one is verb ing third one is past participle past participle and how these things are used uh, i am going to show you through examples infinitive V ing, verb ing, and past participle. These three things, how these are used. The players went to the field. Look at the example. The players went to the field. Here the verb is play football. Infinitives generally are used for future actions for purposes. If this gap refers to any purpose, you will read the whole sentence. Then if you think that here purpose is expressed, then to express the purpose, you have to use the infinitive. That means to plus verb. So here what will be there to play to play football the players went to the field to play football the players went to the field to play football when they went actually they didn't play football that means playing the action will be done later that means it is near near future actions so in that case you have to use infinitives to play I am actually giving only one example for one specific roles so that we can conclude it very easily and in short time. The next one is Look at the example. I saw an old man carry a heavy load. I saw an old man carry a heavy load. So look at the verb here. So this is the main verb. And there is only one subject, I. And if I write here, carry it. Uh, here, so past indefinite tense. And if I if I uh, make it carry it then there is no contraction that means it cannot be made compound sentences that means this is simple sentence so this is not the main verb so we have to use infinitives or ing that means the subsidiary verbs so look at this i saw an old man carry a heavy load when i saw this action was going on carry the action of carrying was going on and if something goes on in a particular time, we have to use ing. That means present participle. So what will be there, my dear learners? Caring. So I saw an old man carrying a heavy load. I saw an old man carrying a heavy load. Have you got it? Okay, we are going to the next example.
Hamlet in gap there is a verb right by Shakespeare is a revenge play. So look at the example, my dear learners. Hamlet right by Shakespeare is a revenge play. So all of you might have heard uh, William Shakespeare is one of the greatest dramatists of the Elizabethan period. He wrote many, many plays and even the English man uh, worship William Shakespeare because of his great achievement in uh, literature. So you know, if you want to learn English a language, you also should learn a little bit literature in this period. And if you can be fond of literature, that will uh, actually make you much curious to learn in, if, in, in a future time. So let's see the example. Hamlet right by Shakespeare is a revenge play. The main verb is here is, and you know, <coughs> Hamlet right, here is the verb is, and right is this is present indefinite tense you know is refers to this is present indefinite tense but look at the verb right is the action of writing takes place now or it will take place or will or it took place in the past of course you must be conscious about it the action of writing was done during Elizabethan period, actually when Shakespeare was alive, Shakespeare himself, Shakespeare himself wrote the play. So this action was done earlier. That means it will be past. And in that case, you have to use the past form, written. Written. So Hamlet, written by Shakespeare, is a revenge play. I think these three examples have been clear to you. And if any sentence you actually you find in exam paper, then I think all of you will be able to answer correctly. So let's go to the next category. Tense. In tense, there are many things. And one thing I want to note here that if you are not expert in tense and voice, you can never learn this right form of verbs. You know, this item, right form of verbs, always deals with these two things, voice and tense. So I think before uh, watching this video, and you have to learn first tense and voice. Be expert in those items, then this, will, this item will be the easiest one. So tense. I am not talking about all types of tenses, only some specific tenses on which the question is set. I am talking about those things. Just for example, if there is just, just now, already, yet, recently etc in a in a sentence if you find just just now already yet recently lately is also there there are other words as well so if you find this uh, one of these words in a particular sentence you must be sure that the tense must be present perfect tense and there you have to use have and or has as auxiliary and the main verb the past participle i am giving you an example My friend My friend just arrived My friend just arrived here So the verb is arrived You see My friend just arrived here So here is the word just Just indicates the tense must be present perfect so in present perfect, you have to use has or have according to the subject's uh, number and person and then verb 3, that means the past participle of the verb. So what will be there, my dear learners? Uh, my 
friend my friend is singular so it will take has has if there is this uh, adverbs just just now already and you have to put these words in between auxiliary and principal verb so we shall write just after just has so my friend has just arrived arrived here I think all of you have got it my friend has just arrived here my friend has just arrived here so if you find any of these words you will write in this type we're going to the next tense Once, once upon a time ago, if you find it, if you find these words in a uh, sentence, once, once upon a time ago, long ago, that means of oh, yesterday. Yesterday, these words, if you find in a sentence. And just recollect your question paper of your exam that you that you had already faced. There were some articles, and the article actually started with once, once upon a time there live a king like this. Once upon a time there. I'm giving an example. Okay, look at the example, my dear learners. Once upon a time, in this way, we have faced many exams. Once upon a time, there live an old cutter in a certain village. So, what will be there? Now, this is the indicator of past indefinite tense. Once upon a time, there live. Here is verb live. So, what will be the past form? Lived. There lived an old cutter in a certain village. In this way, different articles come in our exams. So, be alert about it. Another thing is before and after. Before and after. I don't know if there is before. Before the word before, the clause becomes what? past perfect or or future perfect before before uh, the tense of the clause becomes past perfect or future perfect it will be followed by the next clause if there is In, if there is past indefinite, the first clause before before will be uh, past perfect, and if there is present or future indefinite, future indefinite, if there is present indefinite or future indefinite, if this clause is present or future indefinite, the first clause must be future perfect. So, if you uh, can become alert about it, there will be no incorrect in the exam. So, before there is past perfect or future perfect, from these two, one will be, of course, and <coughs> this, actually this will uh, make sure you that which stance you will follow here. If there is past indefinite, this will be past perfect. And if there is present or future indefinite, then this clause will be future perfect. I am giving a simple example. Hmm. 
my friend leave home Look at the example. My friend leave home before I reach his house. My friend leave home before I reached his house. This is the indicator. Past indefinite. So this must be past perfect. So in past perfect, what do we write generally? Had and the past participle of the verb left. I think it has been clear to you. My friend had left home before I reached his house. Have you understood my dear learners? So we're going to the next rule. You have to be fast with me because we have to learn everything first. Time is very short. So within this short period of time, we have to complete many things. And then one thing is here. Since or for. Since or for. This also indicates one tense, like <clears throat> if there is since or for, and there will be a time. This time will indicate here what will be. Generally, it becomes Generally, it becomes present perfect continuous and sometimes it also might be past perfect continuous but I am showing you this thing. Present perfect continuous, I am showing an example of this role like So look at the example. I give a class since 3.30 p.m. Uh, one thing I want to make sure that sometimes we say I am taking a class. No, it cannot be so. Actually, the teachers give class to the students and the students receive the class. That means they take the class. We the teachers give class to the students and the students take class. That means they receive the classes from the uh, teachers we conduct that means we give class to the students so never make any mistakes be alert about it we give sorry i give a class since 3 30 pm so what will be here uh, this is the factor since it indicates that the tense must be present perfect continuous so what will be i have been i have been there was a bar give and will be giving. I will. I have been giving a class since 3:30 p.m. I think you have been clear about it. So we're going to the next role. So this is all about tenses. I am not talking about tense anymore. You know, boys. I think all of you have in-depth knowledge about boys. Uh, boys. Generally, it is a matter of transitive verb whether the subject acts or is acted upon. If the subject is active or if the subject can perform the action of the sentence, it is active. But if the subject is passive, this is not so much obligatory. In that case, the voice will be passive. I am giving you an example. Yes, we are talking about English. So, example is also English. English. <clears throat> Look at the example. English learn across the world. And you actually see where there is a buy or not. Never look at these things. Buy is not the factor. 
that by indicates this is passive or if there is no by in a sentence it is active this is not the fact the fact is that look at the subject english and look at the verb learn subject is english and verb is learn so whether it will be active or passive passive make sure about it the action is learning the subject is english can english learn of course not this is an inanimate subject it does not have the capability to learn rather with the human beings we can become learners and we the human beings can learn something so this thing has happened here that english can be learned but english cannot learn something across the world so with the learners can learn that's why english will be learned so which which voice will actually we shall use here of course it is passive i have show you i have shown you the reason so english is learned english is learned across the world actually uh, we did not need voice voice is needed only because there are there are some actions there are some actions where the actions are very much important not the doers the person who does the action is not much more important but the action that is done by the uh, doer is much more important in that case we actually use passive voice or voice should be learned in that case i am giving you another, you, uh, another more example you know dayal in bangla it is a dayal and it is a renowned or significant work of our bengali literature humayun ahmed so if we write look at the example they all write by humayun ahmed by is not the factor we shall look about this we shall look at uh, look at the subject and the verb there is a literary work and the action is right so does there have the capability to write something of course not so there cannot write anything that means it is passive it is not here active so subject and verb these two things will identify which voice will it be so we have to use here passive like they all is or was written whatever the tense is it doesn't it, it, it is not a problem so they all is or was written the rest of the sentence they all is or was written by humayun ahmed so i think the problem of voice has been cleared to you and you know online class we have to we to have to finish class within a short period of time so i think i'm taking much more time so today no more uh, i'm going i have to conclude here and make sure your learning is done at home and always remain in close contact with the books and try to follow all the classes conducted by uh, different renowned teachers of different institutions uh, so watch the video to remove your difficulties so that you can actually get maximum marks in the exam and you can face the exams without any fear so no more today all the best thank you everybody